American Beer TV. We are here with Dennis Keller from North Coast Brewing Company, and we are tasting Grand Cru yes. by North Coast. This is their uh, Uber seasonal release. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. About this, Dennis. So this beer just came out. We released it uh, a few months back. Um, it's it's very unique in that it's a high gravity beer that's made 100% with Pilsner malt. So that mm. gives it a very unique uh, body for something that's 12.5% alcohol, but it's made with Pilsner malt. So it, there's a real dichotomy. The general emphasis is what we're trying to accomplish is, is somewhat of a champagne beer. So it wouldn't be an extra dry right. champagne gotcha. beer. It would be something a little bit more like a brute. Um, and so I, I'm not going to say too much about the flavor without you guys. I, I don't want okay. to oh, just jump into your... So, uh, and then, but they did also use some agave nectar and age it in, in oak barrels. And oak barrels as yes. well. So in spirit barrels or just oak? In bourbon barrels. Oh, bourbon barrels. Really? Okay. Yes. Very nice. Well, it's nice got a beautiful bright. color. Yeah. Very bright. Just a just a hint of orange in there. Um, you would never, get, looking at this, you would never guess that it's 12%, you know, 12.5%. Absolutely so. not. No. You it makes it dangerous. No. And even in the nose... You're not getting much heat in the nose. You're getting that good, nice malt sweetness. You get that sweetness. You get that kind of Belgian yeast character. Mm -hmm. yep. You get those fruity esters. You you also pick up that fresh hewn wood aroma. You really and almost like that meringue texture. Yeah, that you can, I, yeah I, I've always the, had a hard time saying that, yeah. that you get that in the nose, but I get that in the nose. I'm nice. not sure if it's a texture or a. No, I hear what, what, what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Nice. Is. Yeah, we don't have a bottle to show you guys because we're drinking this on draft. Too. Yeah, so good move. We did a beer pairing night, and Kenny bought in an extra keg of Grand Cru. So yes. Yeah. Very so, good move on Kenny's part. So just to show I had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. Well, let's get into tasting this. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Those are malt, lots of complex malts. Really, yeah. and 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 there there's, it really I think it really works with the yeast because you're getting lots of fruity notes. You're getting, you know, pear. You're getting apple. You're getting, you know, green uh, apple. You know, yeah, green, yeah, a lot of that green apple. Um, yeah, because the aroma has a little bit more of like a, a floral. Yeah, like so I'm thinking that's going to come through on the palate, and it but does it's a, the malt really, really juicy dominant, fruits. But, yeah. Um, and, and even honey, I think the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. agave comes, the agave nectar comes across with kind of a honey, yeah. similar to what you get in um, in the scrimshaw, that that just slightly honey, but this right. is and you know a number of times yeah, back to right. three, you know? right? And so you know, I'm sh you've got a number of different things there, and it's hard to pinpoint which is which because you got you know that malt, which you're not used to using that much malt in a, a beer like this, and of that particular malt. And then you've got the Belgian yeast strain, which always brings out all kinds of not, uh, interesting fruity notes. And then you've got the agave nectar. So you're like, wow, how does the the yeast play with the agave nectar? You know, it's, Yeah, I it's think the agave nectar really sets this beer apart from a lot of uh, yeah. other big beers like this is because, you know, it's just such a unique flavor, you know. And the wood characteristic yes. is really subtle. But it's, it's definitely there. It's there, but it's really subtle. Some of the, you know, sometimes that bourbon flavor just yeah. overpowers the beer. It and almost has but this is, the this nose of the spirit or that even the mouth. Yeah, of the this spirit. just kind of rounds out mm -hmm. the beer. It kind of adds, you know, it always seems to kind of add like a more round fuller mouthfeel and, and body to the beer. Too. I just love the different layers of flavor. So yeah. when people talk about um, uh, people with an inexperienced beer palate, you're trying to explain the difference between a real Kuh Garden and Shock Top. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the way I often explain it is there's just more layers of flavor, mm -hmm. more complexity. Way. And, and there's there's kind of sharp shelves where you're getting, okay, now I'm getting spice, and okay, now I'm getting, or not spice, but okay, at first I get more of the honey character, yeah. more of the fruity character, but then spice really kicks in it for does. me, like peppery spice. Yes. I and picked then that up on the finish. And then the wood. Really, you know, absolutely like distillates yes. from the uh, 
from the alcohol is, is really come through on the finish. Yeah. So I, I think there's like steps in the, mm -hmm. in the character. But to me, the, the, the malt really comes through. You get some of those grassy notes from yeah. the Pilsner malt. Yeah. yeah. There's just really a tremendous amount going on in this beer. And uh, it's what we kind of come to expect from these really big special occasion barrel aged beers and I mean I think this is a fantastic example of it so God I love you know, yeah I mean it, there's just so much going on what's neat about this beer too is so this is the second time we've done this style it's not exactly the same as the first time we did it but the first time we did it was the 20th anniversary ale okay so we didn't call that Grand Cru we just called it the 20th anniversary ale the similarity is there's a graphic design on the label of this beer that we have now, and it's the same graphic that was used. It's a, a, a geometric pattern. Okay. So that same geometric pattern was featured on the label of that 20th anniversary nice. ale. The interesting thing is I had this 20th anniversary ale at the Church Key in San Francisco for San Francisco Beer Week. I had it on draft. Nice. And at that time, it's got about five years of age on it. Wow. wow. And it was really interesting to see the difference in the beer. It was absolutely nowhere near being cooked. I didn't, I didn't, I was not perceiving any sherry-like or oxidized flavors. Okay. Cool. But it was nowhere near being cooked. Right. Wow. And I had um, at Stuff Sandwich this year, Sam had a 15-gallon keg. Wow. Of 2001 old stock. <laughs> wow. 2001. That guy's a madman. He, he is a madman. And, and for those of you who don't know, Sam has yeah. been going through some very tough yes, times. Yes, yes, I heard about that. He hope he'll be with he'll us. Go out. But to the, to here's, the here's to Sam and everything our forefathers have done for the beer business. Right? Definitely. Cheers um, to that. But that, that 2001 beer was the same. It was nowhere near being cooked. Yeah. Nowhere so near. what were the differences between that five-year-old version of this and what you're tasting now? You tasting know, more young. What, what, what kind of flavors? With, with, without you know? tasting them side by side, I know it's hard, hard to make I know. that comparison. Just go by memory. I said to the brewer <laughs> that I felt that it had dried, that, that some of the mm -hmm. residual sugar was was further attenuated. Right. So and, not as sweet. And well, I, I said that to the brewer, to Mark, and Mark said, no, that's not what happened. Um, so essentially, what he's saying is there's a, there's a countless number of chemical reactions that are occurring in, in a beer that's sitting, right. and it's not always just further fermenting away of the okay. sugar. So I would say that it was drier, and I would say that it was it was even a little softer. It didn't didn't have as much of the hot spice. Okay. So I would say those are the two differences. So just in the really mellowed out, kind of. Yeah, but again, dried out. We yeah. did, Mark didn't use the exact same recipe for both. Okay. It's just this similar style. Similar style. Okay. Gotcha. Similar beer. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be great to see how something like this ages. You know, this has just got so many complexities, and things are going to appear and disappear, and you know, some are going to become more pronounced. Yeah, I know, like hop characteristics yeah. kind of fall off, and then spice characteristics. Too. Not really fall off. They tend to kind of meld and change. Right. Mm -hmm. They become yeah. they become more one with the whole. You know. So I, I was at the brewery two weeks ago, and Mark, the brewer, um, I we were talking about we have something very special coming up. We're doing a limited release, and it's going to be a vertical selection of old stock or barley nice. wine, which is always vintage dated, right? So we're doing two different releases. This, this is almost unobtainable. You won't really be able to buy this commercially. This will be more like something that would be uh, a gift to somebody very special. So anyway, they're doing like four different versions in uh, two different glasses. Yeah. And it'll be four different years, but one batch will be even years. And another batch will be odd years. Oh, nice. So is that something you'd have to get like at the brewery or something? It's unobtainable. It's unobtainable. Wow. It will only be given as a gift to so, a very just selected. Like to, we just, we just like to guys. tease you guys. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But what's cool is, you know, when we're talking about that, I said, well, Mark, I think maybe you should break out some, <laughs> some good stuff. So I posted on my Facebook page, he brought out some 2005 old stock. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And we brought, we went through two bottles of, of that old stock. And it was, it was clearly the color was darker. Um, I would say it was richer than what, what, um, is, is currently released, yeah. and to my palate, I would say it's drier. But again, Mark's saying no, that's not that's it's not, not a quite chemical as process dry. that's occurring, right. and Mark would know. Right, gotcha. But in any case, well, maybe it, uh, it changes. Well, let 
you know, let Mark know that if we were able to get our hands on one of those, yeah. we would certainly put it yeah, to we'll, good use and we'll document do a video. Yeah, we'll video for document all of <laughs> beer. So <laughs> this is exactly the kind of setting where that makes it, that yeah, may it'd be, occur. It'd be beautiful. May occur. <laughs> you know, I mean, li literally, we sat around and we talked about it, and, and we all shook our head and we're like. These are so special, we can't sell them. Yeah, yeah. There's, first of all, there's so few of them. Yeah, yeah. And second of all, they're so special. Yeah. It's just, what, that's what why, price do you yeah. put on No, I hear like you. That. And, that's, and, 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 and that's why, you know, it, we found with the show, honestly, is just kind of two beer geeks. You know, <laughs> the show enables us to buy beers we probably would never buy for ourselves, you know. Yeah. But we're like, you know what? Gives us I can do it for the show. It gives yeah. us a really great reason. <laughs> and so we're always looking for... Because it, this is going on the internet for everyone to see, you know. Everyone can look at this, and it'll be there for years, no matter what happens. And you can go back and you can find out what that tastes like. So now, you were talking about tasting this, you know, 2002, and you're not quite sure. If it was on the video, we could go back and taste right? it. So, right? So, there what did go. I think of that? Click, click, <laughs> and watch it. And so, that's what we're doing. We're documenting all of this right. for future generations. You know, and and actually, to, to actually add to that... To capitalize on that thought, um, something is happening now. So, when we release our old stock, the date on it is the bottling date. Right. So the beer gets aged for an extended period of time, and the date on the the package on the label, yeah. the vintage date, right. is, is when it's bottled. Right. So, so when you buy it in the store and it shows it that it's about like a year ago, don't be concerned because you've been aging. It. Yeah. Exactly. You just released it. Exactly. <laughs> we just had that issue with a beer. We were debating it because it was very different. It was the, uh, I don't even know if I want to say it. It was one of the videos we just did a little while ago. Go back and you'll see my debate about it. Um, and, uh, you know, we weren't sure. It had a date on it that was like a year ago. And we weren't sure if it had been aging in a store somewhere or if it had just been released or whatever. And the beer didn't taste like what the label kind of made it seem like. So I'm wondering. Interesting. So... Well, yeah. the reason I brought it up is just because we are getting ready to change phases. So, all of our 2011 bottling is now being delivered to distributors. In fact, our distributor here, Wine Warehouse, mm -hmm. we're shorting them on what they wanted. And the wow. last of the 2011 is going into the distributorship. So, at retail, that will be around for probably through the first quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start to see the 2012, which is okay. bottled in 2012, but it's sitting yeah. aging. Right for now, a few months, right. so just as a cool. clarification, very nice, yeah. excellent, good, good little tidbit to know. So, cheers, guys. excellent, guys, yeah. very, cheers. very cool. Well done. Cheers. Cheers. We must yeah. be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we're down to it. I got one little swallow left. Get out there and drink craft beer. Cheers, yeah.